In this session, we will try to understand Bloom filter. Imagine there was a watchman who has to allow a guest if the name of the guest exists in a register. So, the watchman maintained a register with the names of people ordered alphabetically. Everything was going great until the register started becoming really huge and the number of guests visiting per second also increased tremendously. This resulted in too much time for query and thus huge wait time. So, he came up with an idea to keep only the first two letters of each name in a separate notebook and have another watchman do the screening based on first two letters of the name since this new index containing only the first two letters is really small. Therefore, screening became really fast. This new index is known as Bloom and the new watchman is called a Bloom filter. If the Bloom filter or the new watchman did not find the first two letters of a person's name in the index, it is guaranteed that the person is not allowed. But if the first two letters are found in the index, we need to do a thorough check because multiple people could have the same first two letters. Therefore, the person is sent to the first watchman for actual checking. So, many persons are dropped by the new watchman and thus the load on the first watchman has reduced tremendously. Let us take another example. In the diagram, we have a storage lookup, the real lookup function, which can deterministically tell if a key exists in a storage or not. We have a Bloom filter placed before actual lookup. Say, a user requests for key 1, the first request would go to the Bloom filter. The Bloom filter would compute the hash code for key 1 and then check in the Bloom if it exists or not. In this case, key 1's hash code doesn't. So, it is certain that key 1 does not exist even in the actual storage. So, there is no need of further queries. In case of key 2, the Bloom filter found that the hash code of key 2 exists. But it does not mean that the key 2 certainly exists because the hash code of other keys could be same as hash code of key 2. So, the actual query is done on the storage. And storage after querying found key 2. So, our result is successful. In case of key 3, the Bloom filter found it but the actual storage did not. So, the answer is no. You can notice that in case of key 3, lookup at storage is unnecessary while storage lookup for key 2 is necessary. The advantages of first case are higher compared to disadvantages of dual lookups in the second and third case. Now, let's try to understand the hashing function. In our example, we converted big names into small ones using first two letters. This is called hashing. And since computers are pretty efficient with searching numbers, generally hashing converts a huge string into a fixed size number. For example, we could convert a string into number as follows. Sum up the ASCII value of all the characters and calculate the remainder after dividing by 100. This value will always be less than 100 no matter how big the text is. So, this bloom will contain at most 100 entries no matter how big each name is and how many names are there. So, we generally choose a hashing function which gives us the resulting list or bloom that can fit into the memory. Another question that we need to answer is, does it make sense to have more than one bloom filter or chaining bloom filters? The answer is no. If a bloom filter is slow, instead of chaining another bloom filter, we make the existing bloom filter faster by either making the bloom smaller or by increasing the system's memory. 
A bloom is generally kept in the memory in the form of a bit vector. Here, after applying the hash code, we got numbers 1, 5, 6, 10, 11, and 15. So, we created a bit vector or array of size 15 with all the default values initialized to false. For each value that exists in the list, we set the bit to true at that location. Now, let's try to understand how Bloom filters play a role in HBase. Bloom filters can be enabled on HBase tables per column family if you have humongous data to search. There are three kinds of Bloom filters you can set. None, which means there will be no Bloom filter. Row, the Bloom filter is prepared based on the row key. The hash of row key will be added to the Bloom on each insert. Row call, the hash of row key plus column family plus column qualifier will be added to the Bloom on each insert. 